Hi, it's me again, and it's been a busy week in the world of TV license news, and I've struggled to keep up with most of it. The amount of articles and clips and stuff that's come out, it's been crazy, all because of the midterm review, which is complete and utter toss anyway. But loads of you have sent me a couple of video clips that you wanted me to have a look at. So I've skimmed them, I've chopped out some bits I thought we could talk about here, and um, yeah, I'll react to them. As always, I can't promise I'll get very far in before kicking off as usual. But yeah, let's uh, let's see where this goes, shall we? All right, first up, I think it's our culture and media secretary, Lucy Fraser. So let's figure out how to make this thing play. Uh, a number of years ago, it was determined that midway between uh, the license, the uh, charter renew, the next the, the next uh, charter review period uh, is at the end of 2027. Uh, mid midway uh, between the periods, there would be a midterm review of how the BBC is functioning. Uh, given that the last charter review, we made fundamental changes to the BBC. Um, so I've been uh, discussing in a collaborative way how the BBC can improve. Did they just say there that she had fundamental change at the last charter review? I can't think of any fundamental change at the last charter review apart from possibly freezing it for a couple of years, but did anything change? Did you notice anything changing at all? And all she's talking about in this midterm review is BBC Bias and Ofcom, because that's all they can do. She's just talk. All she does is talk, and it gets, yeah, it gets worse than that. She, she, the woman just winds me up. The woman just winds me up. I mean, I read a great thing. The BBC shouldn't have criminal tools in its armoury that you said this morning on Times Radio, which I completely agree about. This prosecution of vulnerable people by the BBC itself is an utter disgrace. There are many people who don't watch the BBC who are being targeted. Surely you want to do something about those people massively. Blimey. Well, I'm not a big fan of Jeremy Kyle, I must admit, but yeah, well said there, Jeremy. Hey, well said, mate. You've put that to her as I would have put that to her. So let's see if she dodges the question. And also, I don't know who brought their dog to work that day, but there seems to be some barking in the studio there. So let's see her dodge that question about prosecutions and the TV licence. Let's have a look. Yes, I have, uh, I have said uh, that I don't agree with criminal prosecutions uh, in relation to the BBC. Our powers are limited in order to change that. Uh, as I mentioned, we can only make fundamental change at charter review periods. But I have said at the next charter uh, review period, um, I will look at those criminal prosecutions. So she did say there that the only change they can do is when the charter is due for renewal, which is 2027. They can't do anything during the midterm. So what's the big fucking chat about the midterm review when you can't actually do anything and also shouldn't you be planning it out now 2027 isn't that far away if the bbc need to make any fundamental change in how they operate surely they need to know that now right so why are you not getting all the discussion done everything planned out ready for 2027 if you are planning some change which proves to me that proves quite clearly She's not planning on changing anything due to the criminalisation and the cost or the way it's funded for the licence fee. Because you would need to be doing that now. That would need to be getting rubber stamped, written down, and get the BBC to plan ahead for 2027. So obviously, she's doing fuck all. The, the news organisations that the, the public most trust is at the BBC. I understand this uh, review. I don't is, think that's is, true is, at all anymore. Sorry. Up. I disagree. I think well, I'm talking about a YouGov survey from last year. Oh, right, OK. Um, well, you can't argue with Jeremy Kyle there, can you? He's clearly not a BBC fan. He's saying the things that many of us are thinking, and he's saying it on almost mainstream media too, Lucy Fraser. So that's good. The other the other lady, I watched the whole thing. He's co-presenter there. don't know her name, sorry. Seems to be a bit of a fan of the BBC. Maybe she's angling for a job there. But we didn't really get a lot more out of Lucy Fraser in this interview. She didn't really say a lot more. She went off all about stately homes and other bits and pieces that are just not relevant to me. So the other person that was in the news recently talking about these things, one of the talking heads, was former Culture and Media Secretary Nadine Dorries, who you may remember back when she was in the gig, I talked about her a lot. I had a lot of hope, a lot of hope for Nadine. I thought she was going to get the job done. And she's now going to talk about it. And it's quite interesting. There was a review that was due to be launched about how the BBC is funded 
and the BBC licence fee. And that was delayed by Rishi Sunak over and over. It was blocked when he was Chancellor. He actually said to me, no, you can't do this because it's a taxation policy and taxation policy is the Treasury. It isn't a taxation policy, Mm. but he blocked and blocked it. Well, that's interesting, right? That's interesting. So she reckons she had some stuff written down and it was blocked by then Chancellor Rishi Sunak, who called it taxation policy and it's none of her business. So there it is, the government themselves, the man that's sitting in the high chair now, admitting that the TV licence fee is a tax. It's not funding for your favourite public service broadcaster. It's actually a government tax. Now, I held out a lot of hope for Nadine. I thought she could get the job done. But she does go on to say maybe it wasn't, wasn't all her fault the government are protecting the bbc she's just admitted it there she also says multiple times in this the license fees going nowhere and she knows more about it than i know and last a few weeks ago in december on a busy news day the government slipped out onto its website that it has launched the review but it said the review would be undertaken by an independent panel of experts and they have yet to announce who that is the review's going to be done by an independent panel of experts, but they haven't said who it is. Well, I can hazard a guess that there'll be people who used to work for the BBC or for the government that are supporters of the BBC. It won't be someone like me who's critical of the BBC. No, why, why would they do that? They're not going to get the result they want then, are they? The most important thing is this. But as a result of the government holding up that review of the BBC licence fee, the licence fee is here to stay. Because there is no way, I was told when I was Culture Secretary, it would take at least three years to bring a change about. They have deliberately stalled until now, until it is therefore not possible to change the BBC funding model. So the BBC licence fee is here to stay. How many times have I said that? If you're a regular viewer of this channel, you'll know how many times I've said that. It will take years to turn the BBC around. They're going to need at least three years' notice to be able to do anything. So if they're going to change the funding model, it's got to be rubber-stamped today. Because the BBC will say, well, we can't just turn adverts on or start a subscription service tomorrow. We need. It's going to take us a couple of years to get everything implemented and procedures in place. And, and rightly or wrongly so with that, that is what the situation will be. So it needs to be sorted out now. I've said ages ago, uh, last year, about this time last year, if you track back on the videos, I will have said, this is it, the licence fee will get renewed again. They might give it another five years just as a temporary measure while they work it out, or they might give it the full bifter again. It's too late now to change the licence fee model, which is okay because it means they can't change it into a media tax, even though they've just admitted it is a tax that you can't avoid. If it carries on like it is, at least you don't have to pay it if you don't need it. So it's not the end of the world. But yeah, she's been she's saying the things I've been saying for ages, which uh, makes me feel better. It means I was on the right track. And it will continue to rise, and people will three thousand five hundred prosecutions a month are taking place. People will still be prosecuted. The most vulnerable people for non-payment of the license fee. That is the shocking piece of news about the BBC. That's not what anyone is talking about, and that's what's being buried, if you like, by this window dressing today of the fact that Ofcom will be holding the BBC to account for its online content. I think she's right. I think there is. A lot of that. In the news recently, there's been so many articles about people with disabilities or people being dragged to court who are vulnerable. It's been going on a lot. Now, this midterm review buries all of that when you search for BBC like news-related stuff for the TV license stuff. It buries it all under this Ofcom review where Ofcom are doing a great thing to help impartiality of the BBC and all of that. It's buried all those vulnerable people that are being prosecuted. So, yeah. I I've, I always, I liked Nadine. When she first got the gig, I held great hope for Nadine. And I said, I do remember saying, I'll have to track back some of the old videos, that I think, it, I do believe that she wanted fundamental change. I do believe she wanted to change the BBC. And I did believe, even while she was in the job, that she was being held back from doing it. And it sort of sounds like that. I mean, she's not going to burn any bridges by actually saying that. It does sound a bit like that, doesn't it?
Yeah, and of course, you referred to a report in yesterday, Sunday Times, Nadine, three and a half thousand a month licence fears are being, are being prosecuted, often in closed courts without any chance of representation, including disabled people, those in wheelchairs who just missed a single payment. And indeed, people that paid their payments for them may themselves have been through bereavement. This paints a picture, doesn't it, Nadine, of, of, of a heartless, uncaring organisation only intent on making profit at any cost. Well, they are. They've proven that over and over again. There's no heart at the BBC. They don't care about you, the viewer. The boss of the BBC said publicly last year he doesn't care about viewing figures. And they're OK to take vulnerable people with mental health disorders to court for not paying a TV subscription service. Does that sound like an organisation that cares? Does it sound like an organisation with heart? No, they're not. They're, it's a ridiculous situation. Anyway. Yeah, and I think it's um, it's it's a, the problem with the BBC. It is a huge organisation, and it's grown beyond its own ability to control itself and to regulate itself. It's got too big, and you know when you have large organisations, whether it's the BBC or the NHS, that a, a culture develops and a culture grows, and it becomes the culture becomes so huge that it doesn't matter who you've got at the top, they just can no longer. It becomes a monster, mm. and it's a monster they can't control. And that is what has happened with the BBC. It sounds like I've been on the right track then with some of the things I've been saying. I'd like to interview Nadine, have a little chat with her about it all. I've been saying for a while that Tim Davies in over his head. He can't manage it. Any organisation that brings in 3.7 billion quid a year and can't make enough TV programmes to please the people and still ends up with a 300 million pound black hole is knackered. It makes no sense how they can't do that. The culture at the BBC is wasteful. They cannot manage it. And don't talk about some of the other culture they've had at the BBC in the past with covering up stuff. The only way to correct the BBC, not that I think it should be corrected, I think it should be ended personally, or at least stand on your own two feet, would be to close it down and start again from scratch. It's gone too far. You know, it doesn't matter how often I come on TV stations like yours or how often I write about it in my column of the Daily Mail, it still continues to just roll on as it is. Nothing takes place. And it's to change the process. And, and that's what we're stuck with now. We're stuck with the BBC licence fee. We've probably got an incoming Labour government. It will never change. The licence fee will continue to have to pay more for it. And the BBC, will, Ofcom's best efforts, will continue just as it is. Now, again, it's a fair point. I mean, how many petitions have there been to scrap the licence fee or to give people a vote on whether they need to pay the licence fee? How many newspaper articles, how many campaigns have been launched to try and stop the prosecutions or just to stop the licence fee in general over the last 10 years? I have lost count. And where are we? Exactly the same as where we were 10 years ago, except for it's going up again this year. Nothing is working because it must be so protected from the top, as Nadine said. Where is this going to go? The licence fee is here to stay for a while, which is better than it becoming a media tax or going on your council tax or something. Granted. But it still doesn't make any sense in this day and age for one organisation to tax the people in order for you to watch some other channel. How is this even making sense in today's day and age? In 2022, you were saying the current model is completely outdated and the, BBC, the Ofcom should hold the BBC to account and we need a completely new way of funding the BBC. What would you like to see happen? So the review, which I had ready to go on the day Boris Johnson was, we were ready to launch that the following week, um, should have been launched years ago. I mean, what I want to see happen has been timed out. She had a review written and done. Publish it then. It can't. It can't go into power now. It's it's meaningless, isn't it? But let us know what you had in this review, Nadine. I'd like to know. There might be some reason she can't. It's probably secret or something in there. But I would love to know what Nadine had written in that review. And I had the full backing of the Prime Minister Boris Johnson in launching the review of the BBC licence fee and in finding an innovative way of funding the BBC without losing those core functions of the BBC, which are important. You know, it is important to say the BBC is a beacon of broadcasting across the globe. Without losing those core functions, how could we how could we make it better value for people in the UK who are having to pay ever-increasing costs? I had his full backing 
Um, but I didn't have the backing of the Chancellor Rishi Sunak. And it doesn't appear that the people have the backing of Rishi Sunak now because this is just window dressing and the BBC licence fee is here to stay. Well, she knackered that, didn't she? She knackered all those good things she said by saying the BBC is a beacon and we need to find a new way to fund it and stuff like that and defending Boris Johnson. And let's not forget that Boris Johnson made an election promise to keep the free TV licences for the over 75s, which is a government funded thing. He got into power. What did he do? He went, yeah, no, we're not doing that. It's the BBC's problem now. Let the BBC fund it. And the BBC went, we weren't funding it. And that's why over 75s generally now have to buy a TV licence. None of that makes any... She says some good things. This was always the problem I had with Nadine. She says some good things, and then she just completely ruins it by saying something else. I don't know. I thought it was interesting to hear... I can get rid of these now. Thank God for that. I thought it was interesting to hear what she had to say because I, so I do believe that she wanted to change the BBC whether to suit us more or to suit the government more we don't know do we but I do also believe she was stopped from doing that do I believe Lucy Fraser wants to fundamentally change the way the BBC is funded and to decriminalize the TV license fee no not for a bloody second and what do you think about these? I'll tell you what, I'll put the link to both these videos in full down in the description so you can go and have a look yourself and listen to the whole thing. But the Lucy Fraser one was mostly unrelated to the TV license fee apart from a couple of clips that I showed you. Let me know your thoughts on it down in the comments below. And while you're down there leaving your comment, hit all the buttons and everything as well. It can't hurt, can it? Subscribe, all of that. It's all free to do. And if you do that, it keeps you up to date with the channel. And hopefully I'll see you in another video again soon, won't I? Thanks for watching. Ta-da.